14 feared dead in the southeast, including four policemen, many injured, goose destroyed, and the sit-at-home order observed across the southeastern states. Um, we've invited Mr. Chris Wokobia, a public affairs analyst, um, to discuss this. Good morning, Mr. Wokobia. Good morning. Now, the events of yesterday across southeastern Nigeria, especially regarding the violence, could that have been avoided? If the if the shit, if, can you repeat the repeat question, please? Yes, I am asking you if the violence and bloodshed witnessed across the southeast yesterday because of the sit-at-home order could have been avoided. Clearly, yes. I, I think that um, the the problem with IPOB and their uh, programmatic is the fact that they fail to understand that we live in a country where hunger, poverty, and joblessness is prevalent. When you declare a sit at home on a Monday morning, which is the first working day of the, of the week, then you have a problem on your hands. And then let me also say that we who preach uh, restructuring and who are saying that the time has come for us to move our country away from separatist tendencies to dialogue and not opposed to the issues that I pub and those who sympathize with separatism uh, are conversing. We believe that the time for equity, justice, and fairness is now. But we believe that we'd rather Georgia than World War. And you cannot wake up and unilaterally ask the whole South is to shut down on a Monday morning. Don't forget that South, the Southeasterners are basically business people who survive on daily earnings. And then when you wake up and say that you must stay at home on a Monday morning, it becomes very difficult. Oh. And then don't forget also that we had conflicting information. One said that the younger brother of the leader of IPOD had said that the seat tight wasn't holding again. Another sector or segment of IPOP says it must hold. And then, obviously, with the conflicting information, you will have people who will step out to work. You will have people who, out of ego, must seek to enforce the seat tight order. And that's actually what led to the crisis and the conflict and the blood bloodletting in the Southeast yesterday. All right, Mr. Ogobi, I, I want us to, you know, uh, from your perspective, um, understand where these ideas come from. Um, who, you know, imagined that a sit-at-home order might be able to urge or force the government's hand into releasing Namdekanu? You know, and what does this say about the thinking that, you know, goes on with the IPOB and their decisions uh, generally? Let me say clearly that oftentimes... People get too emotional, emotive, and they lose sight of the realities that we have on our hands. Forcing a government to release Namdekanu is almost an impossibility. Dialogue, dialoguing with the government, engaging with the government, is more plausible. And I, I think that leading the people of the Southeast, the way of confrontation will not help the cost of IPOB and the justice, equity, and fairness that we seek in Nigeria. What we must begin to do is to understand that even the greatest wars and, and the, mo the most vicious conflicts often ends at the table of dialogue. So those who converse Biafra should understand that we, nobody wants to go back to 1966, 67, 68, 69, and 70, when young people refused to understand the, 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 the profit of peaceful engagement, took a nation to war, and about three million lives were lost. Nobody wants to go back there again. And so I, I think that what Ohanese and some of us are doing 
by engaging the government and engaging leaders of the government in making them understand that, if you like, the right to self-determination is constitutional. The right to self-determination is recognized by United Nations and several treaties. And what government must do address the fundamental issues of nationhood. That is why some of us also are saying that we must dialogue at some point. We must resolve the teaching issues of this nation. We must address fundamental issues of justice, equity, and fairness. But to begin to threaten the Nigerian state, it's, it's, it's akin to terror. The definition of terror is to overawe the nation, the state. You know, to undermine security agencies and to undermine the rule of law. So what that's, that's... IPOB is doing and the stratagem of IPOB is, to say the least, um, uncomplimentary, reprehensible, and lampoonable. I, I think that the time has come for all those who sympathize with uh, Mazen Namdekano and the IPOB tendency to understand that it is better to dialogue and engage with government. That way we can get whatever we want peacefully. Okay, Mr. Wokobia, that's exactly where I was going because we've heard people say that, you know, based on how they've interacted with people from the Southeast. They know that these people actually support the cause of IPOB and, and Namdekano. So when we look at the um, sit-at-home order yesterday, the fact that commercial banks were shot, schools were shot, marketplaces, motor parks and all of that, um, would you say that was, you know, motivated by fear or sympathy for IPOB and Namdekano? Yeah, I didn't get that part well, but um, if, I can, if I can go around it, I... I think that asking the commercial banks and businesses the shutdown is overreaching uh, the rights of IPOB to protest. You know, you cannot decree that business places shut up, shut down, because you have a problem with government. You don't have that right. You cannot declare public holiday. You cannot force a sit-in or a sit-tight on the people who are not with you. IPOB is a movement. It's not a government. IPOB is a movement. It cannot force people to obey its instructions. And I think that's where those who celebrate what happened in the Southeast yesterday are very wrong. Mm. There are people who believe in the need for justice, equity, and fairness within Nigeria. There are people, and I think, and I say this without fear of the querulous critics, that those who support the call for restructuring the call for addressing the fundamental issues of state within the Nigerian nation are more in number. So I, I think that those who are overexcited about these issues about separatism should do a rethink. Because evil businesses across this country may be jeopardized if they continue this way. I, I, and, and I simply do not think that I thought is acting rightly and acting within the confines of the law. All right. Uh, Mr. Wokobi, I, I want us to you know, speak on two final things, I think, before we go. Uh, the first one would be for those who say, well, you've mentioned dialogue um, and jaw-jaw instead of war-war, but w w what about those who say, well, dialogue hasn't worked, obviously, because they've been in dialogue for a long time and they've you know, seen that the government in, does not in any way listen to anything that has to do with dialogue. You know, and they would maybe also refer to, you know, the, the uh, formation of uh, terror groups in, the, in, in different parts of the country um, as a failure of the government to have a listening ear to the concerns of the people. Um, so respond to those who say that dialogue hasn't worked and that's why the IPB is taking the current um, uh, route that it's taken. And then second, um, does all of this also show failure of leadership? Um, from Mohanez Ndibo to the Igbo, you know, political leadership, you know, across the Southeast? No, let me start with the, the last part of your question. Mohanez is doing his best. You cannot force uh, a horse. If you force a horse to the water, you cannot force it to drink. Mohanez has done his best within the years, the past few years, to, to articulate a proper call for justice, equity, 
and fairness within the Nigerian Federation. I remember how well and effectively uh, Chief John Wado led that organization. Now, let me say clearly that as you and I talk, what is important is that those who are emotive and emotional regarding the extent and, and, and the effect that dialogue will have in the call for justice, equity, and fairness in Nigeria are uh, overtaken by emotions. You know, just dialogue is the way to go. Remember the struggle for human rights in America. Remember the, 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 the two major characters who led the effort for equity in America, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. And remember why Martin Luther King Jr. stands tall and taller involved. He talked about the need for dialogue as the way to go. Remember the story of Mahatma Mohadas Gandhi and the struggle for liberation of India from British control. Remember the struggle of Madiba, who threw away Nkunto Wisizwi, that's the spear of the nation, violence for peaceful engagement. After 27 years of imprisonment, he came out tops. He became the president of a free South Africa. What am I trying to say? The path to dialogue and freedom is almost always smoother better, and it leaves the nation without the bile of hate. What we saw in 1967 and 1970 is what we're still seeing today. All right. Approach. Chris Wonkobia, uh, thank you very much for your time, for speaking with us this morning. Um, and we, of course, uh, wish you a great day ahead. Looking forward to another conversation with you. Thank you. I guess that's, uh, that's it for today. A beautiful Tuesday, the 10th of August, um, 2021. Um, still about the um, second, the conversation we had before now regarding vaccine hesitancy, just to remind Nigerians that the vaccination program have been postponed um, until August 16th, and that, yes, you should be encouraged to go ahead and take those vaccine doses if you haven't, uh, because, you know, they run out fast. Despite the fact yeah. that there's vaccine hesitancy, some parts of the population you know, say that, you know, because of all the controversies, all the um, theories, they don't, they do not want to take the vaccine. But you need to also understand that vaccines are running out fast and that you need to protect yourself we don't even because have there's a Delta variant. Exactly. We don't even have enough. Exactly. There's a Delta variant. Only God knows how much this, vac this um, virus will continue to mutate and even get worse. So it's important to take those vaccines and, you know, protect yourself. Um, Absolutely. And yes. if you've had your first dose, uh, you know, check out, I think it's written on the card they give you, you know, the date for your second dose. So if, if it falls in, around this period, then you should go get your second dose Definitely. of the vaccine. My name is Annette Felix. Thank you for joining us this morning on The Breakfast. And I am Osao Gye Ogbon.